So welcome back to the 22nd edition of the RCA Training Tip Show, where today I will be reviewing the all-new Merida Reacto. This is the 8000E edition, which is the exact same frame external to the colours as used by Team Bahrain McLaren in the Pro Peloton. And I'd say this bike is arguably, at least from an Aussie market perspective, the best value for money road bike in the Pro Peloton. And I'll explain why I'm saying that coming up. So before we get started today, I should be pointing out in this review and all the reviews on this channel, I'm not sponsored or getting paid or whatever you wanna call it, they're completely independent. So what we have here is the fourth generation of the Merida Reacto, which was first pioneered in 2011 and has recently been upgraded to become slightly more aerodynamic, but perhaps more importantly, in my opinion, it's become more comfortable and it's now sporting a sleeker looking package in many ways, which we'll be delving into. Now we're gonna split this review into four main parts and I just wanna point out for the on-bike footage that you're gonna see where I am riding, I normally use the GoPro Black Hero 7, but in today's video, I'm gonna be using the Insta360 1R here. So the four points are, let's talk about numbers, including the price point and the weight. Number two, let's talk about the aesthetics and the overall look and how Merida have made their aero bike more aesthetically pleasing. Number three, we'll talk about the ride quality, including my rating system to give this bike a definitive score. And number four, we're gonna talk about the overall package that you will get with this Merida Reacto right here. And while discussing the overall package, I'll share with you what it's been like to get back on disc brakes. You see, I'm a bit of a Rimboy fan. And I'll conclude with who I think this bike best suits from a riding perspective. But before we get into those four main points, I wanted to share with you the Merida story. It's quite an interesting or compelling story to share. And the more I dig, the better it gets. In fact, Merida completely owned the manufacturing process and are touted as one of the biggest bike manufacturers in the world. Specialized would not want you to know, but according to Wiki and many of my independent sources, Merida own 49% of specialized bikes and thus are the manufacturing powerhouse behind one of the most highly regarded bike brands in the world. And I assume it's that relationship with Specialized that restricts Merida from being sold in North America. You can't buy it in the US at all, unless of course you go to a black market, you can pick yourself up a couple of wild tigers and a couple of Merida Reactos. And the Merida brand, while it is Taiwanese, all their product design and engineering is done out of Stuttgart in Germany, which is renowned for quality engineering and product design. So they have a blend of German engineering, Taiwanese manufacturing, a manufacturing process that they own. It's pretty powerful stuff, right? So let's get into point number one, which is, let's discuss the price and weight of the Merida Reacto. So we have to start with price, or should I say value for money. It is clear when you compare the Merida Reacto or the Merida brand to other bikes in the same category that one of the key strengths of Merida and the Merida Reacto in this instance is price, particularly from an Aussie market perspective. Let's quickly take a look at a few competing brands and how they price at a similar level to this model. Let's look at the Giant Propel Advanced Pro Zero Disc with Shimano Altegra Di2. That's $7,999 AUD, but wait a sec. This isn't their top of the line frame like I have here with the Merida 8000E. So we really should be looking at the Propel Advanced SL1 Disc with SRAM Force ETAP Access. Yes, a slightly more expensive group set, but coming in at $9,299 AUD. The BMC Time Machine Road 013 with Shimano Altegra DI2, that comes in at $10,199 AUD. And the Venge Pro, which I know they're no longer making, but it was coming with Shimano DI2, that's $9,400 AUD. And then the Merida Reacto 8000E with Shimano DI2, that's $7,799 AUD. Now I am conscious we could get into a tug of war between the different wheels and handlebar systems, etc., that are included across those different ranges, but let's face it, they're all using high quality stuff and there is roughly a $2,000 plus difference between this bike here and competing bikes at a similar level. 
And when you think about that price point, that's another bike you could probably buy. It's a high quality indoor trainer. It's a lot of cash. Now let's talk about weight and this bike here, the Merida Reacto, this is a medium. And let me point out for the Merida brand, a medium is a 56 centimeter top tube, which is actually not what I would typically ride, although I can ride a 56. I would normally be on a 54 or in the case of Merida, that's a small, which is a 54.5 centimeter top tube. So the weight of this 56 centimeter top tube Merida Reacto with Shimano Ultegra DI2 and Reynolds AR58 disc wheels came in at 8.18 kilograms. That is with my 200 gram speed plate pedals attached and thanks to Keith from Trilogy Cycles there weighing the Merida. But if we go a step further here to round things up relating to Merida, and it should be noted that Merida will offer the new Reacto in two tiers of carbon frames. The premium CF5, which is on this bike I have here, and the mid-priced CF3. Merida claims that aerodynamics, ride comfort, and stiffness are unchanged between the two, with the key difference being on the scales. The new CF5 level frame is quoted to weigh 965 grams for a painted medium, with the matching fork at 457 grams, and the cheaper CF frame is quoted at 1,145 grams, while the fork sits at 490 grams. So let's move on to point number two, and that is aesthetics or the look of the Merida Reacto. And this is actually quite an important topic for the Merida Reacto because it appears Merida have gone to some lengths to I'd say almost clean up the new Reacto when comparing it to its predecessor to make it look as precise as possible. Some notable iterations, as you can see, looks pretty clean at the front end there. With complete cable integration, according to Merida, this not only improves the aesthetics of the bike, but also generates a two watts saving, according to their virtual wind tunnel testing done at 45 kilometers per hour. And where most of Merida's competition has achieved the scenario through proprietary systems, Merida has gone for FSA's ACR system, something already used by the likes of Bianchi and De Rossa. Merida have also revised or updated their disc coolers, which are now further integrated into the frame and the fork. Another revision worthy of mention is the tire clearance. You can now get 30 millimeter tires into the Merida Reacto. You might be asking yourself, isn't that the type of feature you'd be looking for on like an endurance road bike? So you could take a gravel riding or something like that. But what you need to think about is by putting 30 millimeter width tires in an aero race bike and reducing the tire pressure a little bit, call it 80 to 90 PSI, you're going to increase or improve the comfort factor. So if you are looking to achieve some big miles on an aero race bike, this feature will come in handy and inadvertently, as a result of the bigger tire clearance, I've had to make the fork longer, and in order to maintain the same geometry, the same aggressive geometry as its predecessor, they've got a shorter head tube there. Now some other Final iterations worth mentioning are as follows. We have a direct mount gear hanger, a new hidden seat post clamp, new front through axle with removable through axle lever. And lastly, Merida have maintained from its predecessor and I believe updated the S-Flex seat post to maintain comfort in the rear and is a welcome feature on an aero bike, which is often very harsh on the rider. And to extend further on comfort, which was clearly a key KPI, when creating this Merida Reacto, they've dropped the seat stays even further. I don't think you can get much lower than that. And apparently that makes the bike more aerodynamic, but if we use some common sense here, you can see what happens when the road buzz and vibrations travels through the frame. It hits the seat tube a lot lower, which gives the seat tube more opportunity to flex to reduce the amount of road buzz and vibrations that goes into the rear of the rider. And I think if we talk about the Merida at a high level, the aesthetics, it's definitely a good looking bike. I think it's definitely a level above its predecessor, which has an unusual, almost polarizing top tube shape. I'm talking about the section that led into the head tube. So up next, we have agenda item number three, and that is the ride quality, including my rating system to give this bike a definitive score. And the rating system that I will share with you includes scores out of 10 for six critical factors, which are speed, handling, practicality, stiffness, comfort, and value for money. Now, before we get into the rating system, I need to share some context with you up front. I realized it had been some time since I had ridden 
an aggressive aerodynamic race bike. You see right now, I'm currently getting around on a BMC team machine with heavy wheels and tires. So I had to start to reflect and consider how this bike compares to other aero race bikes that I have ridden. I'm talking about the likes of the BMC Time Machine, the Venge, the Cervelo S5, and of course, the Chapter 2 Rear 8. And as a result of this reflection, I started to paint a picture in my head of how this bike compares to competing bikes. And I don't like to regurgitate marketing spin or things that are articulated on a manufacturer's website, but I think I actually have to agree with what Merida actually say about this bike right here. And they say, with the new Reacto, we have created a great performing all-rounder with class-leading aerodynamic performance. And that was the summation that I had come to before I had actually laid eyes on the Merida website and what they had to say about their aero bike right here. And that is, this is the best all-round aero race bike I have personally ever ridden. And when I think about my rating system, there are three categories where aero race bikes typically fall down. Number one is value for money or price. Number two is practicality. And the third one is comfort. And that's quite a big one and that is why I took this bike right here on a couple of three and a half, four hour rides because it's typically not until you get to that three hour mark where you really get to appreciate or understand the impact that the stiffness of these bikes have on your body. Is the road buzz and vibrations hitting your lower back, neck and shoulders, etc. And with the Merida, I personally didn't experience any discomfort and found it to rival the time machine from a comfort perspective, which I found interesting because some reviews I've read online say otherwise. Practicality wise, while this integrated cockpit area does have some limitations, it does provide more agility than many others that play in the aero market space and the inclusion of the removable through axle lever add further to its practicality. And price or value for money, as I've already stated at the start of this video, I just don't think you can beat it. If you think there are better ones out there on the market, please let us know in the comments section below. Now in terms of the other sections of the rating system when we talk about handling, I have the Venge as the best handling and that probably has a little bit to do with the weight and obviously the way it was designed. In terms of aggressiveness or stiffness, I had the Cervelo S5, but this machine isn't far behind on either of those categories and when it comes to speed, let's face it, they're all bloody fast machines. I guess the only disadvantage that I found with this bike right here was the acceleration from a lower speed to a higher speed, generating that speed quickly. And I think that has to come down to the weight that this bike has because of the DI2 compared to the other bikes that I tested in the same category, but had better componentry. It's hard to split the descending characteristics of all aero bikes I have personally ridden, but the Merida will not disappoint in this area, I am sure. And please note, I don't use aesthetics in my rating system because that really is a personal preference thing. So let's get into the rating system. Now to the fourth point I'd like to discuss, and that is the overall package you get with the Merida Reacto, including what it's been like to get back on disc brakes. So there are currently six options available here in Australia. From the Merida Reacto 4000 at $3,499 AUD with mechanical 105 disc, to the Team E frame set only at this point, although I believe there will be a super top end Reacto with this frame set coming shortly, with a power meter for just under $12,000 AUD. And back to this Reacto here, I must say that it has been a pleasure to be back riding disc brakes. The performance is unparalleled compared to my good mate Rim. However, there has been a little bit of that annoying meat cleaver sound creeping in. Let's have a listen. And I am certainly looking forward to not having to manage any frustrating sounds and maintenance requirements when I jump back onto my trusty rim braked BMC. What I've actually enjoyed a little bit more when I consider the componentry of this bike over disc brakes has been the electronic shifting 
Getting on the Shimano Ultegra Di2 has been a pleasurable experience. The Reynolds wheels are a great looking addition to the Merida, and in my opinion, if you're going to have a mean looking aero bike, you really need carbon wheels that are around the 60 millimeter in depth which is what we have right here with the Reynolds AR58 wheel set. While some of the content online that I saw about these wheels spoke highly of them, while they look great, they were stiff enough. I was a little bit disappointed with the way they moved around in crosswind conditions, particularly, say, if I compare them to the MV 6.7s that I have. But to have these wheels included at the price point I've discussed is pretty unbelievable. In terms of the tyres, we have some Continental Grand Sport Race 25 millimeters, which rolled nicely and absorbed the road well. I had 100 PSI on the rear, 95 PSI at the front, and it worked nicely for me as a 79 kilogram rider. So who's this bike gonna suit? I think anyone that wants to purchase an aero race bike, tick, particularly if you're looking for something that is good or exceptional, I should say value for money, and then secondly, if you're an amateur racer, if you're doing road races, I wouldn't use this bike for hilly road races. I think that's kind of stating the obvious with aero race bikes, but I think you could definitely use this on some longer, flatter road racing courses because of the way it absorbs the road well. You're not gonna be battered and bruised after 120, 150, 160 kilometers on this bike right here. Definitely, if you're into criteriums, this thing is stiff and fast, but I think to conclude, if you're a recreational amateur cyclist, and there are more of those out there than racers, if you're looking to beat your mates around the block, you want a bike that's good for bunch rides, good for rolling turns with your mates, but you also still want to do the 160 kilometer or 100 mile Fondo event, then you can have this one bike. It's going to fit both of those purposes well. So that's it. Now you've heard my review. What do you think of this bike? Let me know below and I'll catch you in the next video.